Hey everyone, this is Mr. Morrow. I'm going to show you how to create an optimal profile for the Wii on the RetroTINK 4K. My Wii is going to be outputting YPBPR component into the rear RCA jacks for the RetroTINK 4K. It is an NTSC Wii, however, you will be able to create profiles using NTSC and PAL resolutions, so you can make one profile for catching almost every situation on the Wii. The first thing you're going to need is, well, it is best for you to use a modded Wii that can load the 240p test suite. I am using um, G, uh, USB Loader GX, which will allow me to access the homebrew channel and load up the 240p test suite. The 240p test suite is not necessary, however, it is the easiest way to get all of the resolutions available on the Wii as quickly as possible. Um, so we can go ahead and start doing that. I currently have my Wii set to my generic Wii profile. So the first thing you're going to want to do is load up the default profile and then hit the input button and change to your input. Again, this is it's best to use HD RetroVision component cables with YPBPR. And there we go, we've loaded up the picture. I'm going to load up the 240p test suite using uh, the homebrew launcher. And when you load up the 240p test suite, you want to go into options. You want to turn GX the flickering filter on. You want to enable 480p modes. You want to enable PAL modes. You want to enable, you want to change or enable PAL background can be on. PAL starting line should be centered um, and stretch to full 288576 should be off. So we are currently in 240p mode. In the video modes, you can switch to all of the different resolutions and we will be using that to uh, make our optimal weep profile. The first thing you want to do is go ahead into grid in the 240p test suite and hit the ADC button on the RetroTINK 4K remote. You're going to see a bunch of different numbers, but the most important right now is the samples per line. You want to increase this from 1716 to 3,432. 3,432 is the sample rate for all NTSC resolutions on the Wii. It is just locked at that. So we definitely want to increase it to 3,432, almost there. And the actual resolution is going to be 858. So we want to go ahead and set the decimation factor to four. Now that we are here, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. We are going to hit the one, the one to one. And as you can see, it's actually looking very wide. Um, we want to make it proportional and this is actually pretty good. We are looking at a integer scaled nine by nine picture of this. We're going to go back to the ADC menu. And the first thing we want to hit is the auto calibrate phase. This is going to calculate for us um, the best phase of the Wii to use, as well as decimation phase and subphase. And as you can see, this is a pretty sharp picture. Let me see one more time. Okay, so this is about right. So now that we've hit this, um, let's go back and set this back from one to one to four by three. This looks much normal, much more normal now. You want to hit white and RGB. Actually, you don't want to hit white and RGB because you want to hit SMPTE color bars. And then you want to go down in the ADC menu and hit gain, auto gain. This is going to calculate, this is going to calibrate your display to white here. And actually, I've done this wrong. Once you load up the SMPTE color bars, hit the A button to confirm that it is in 100% resolution. If it goes back to 75, press it one more time to get to 100%. And now you want to hit auto gain. Once you do that, all three values should be at 255. And that just means that white in this picture is 255 and the red 
and blue are also 255. This is as good as it can get. So we're gonna go ahead and go back. We've finished the we have finished the calibration for 240p. You can go ahead and hit the profile button, save this as your current profile or save it as a new profile. This is going to be my profile number seven. We're just saving our, pro our progress along the way. In the 240p test suite, go to video options and then hit the 480i scaled 240p assets. That is going to change the resolution to 480i. Um, and so you are going to go down to, let me see, why can't I go? Okay, we wanna to go to test patterns again and hit the grid. This loads up the grid again. We are going to make this, we're gonna hit the scale button, go down to aspect correction, hit go to one to one, hit proportional. This is going to be, and then increase this to five. the vertical factor to the five. And then we're gonna go back to the ADC menu. As you can see, the samples per line reset again. We're going to increase this to 3432. And it's okay that this looks stretched. It just needs to be sharp when we are done calibrating it. So once we hit 3432, we're going to hit the same decimation factor of four, because again, we want 858, and we're going to make our way to phase, to auto calibrate phase, hit the okay button, and we're going to do this a few times. Now, as you can see, it doesn't look very sharp. There is a very good reason for that, and that is because we're currently using motion adaptive deinterlacing so we're going to want to go ahead to the deinterlacer option. And unfortunately, there is no way to make it sh as sharp as possible. So it's, not, it's never going to look as sharp as it can. This is just something you're going to have to deal with. But it, uh, it is actually doing what it is supposed to be doing. Um, let's go back to the ADC menu and hit phase a few more times. This is as sharp as it gets in 480i. And we are going to hit the S and PTE color bars again, and we're going to hit automatic calibrate. And I've done this wrong again because I did not check for 100%. Now it's at 100%, so let's calibrate it now. Okay, perfectly calibrated. This is as sharp as it gets for 240, for 480i. Let's hit the profile button and save our progress, save current and then go to back to the ADC menu. Now, um, we're going to the video menu in the 240p test suite. We are going to make our way to 288p. And as you can see, things are a little different because it is in PAL mode. Let's go to the test pattern and open up a grid. As you can see, there is a uh, there's a blue line in the middle, and this is just because PAL is slightly taller than, than NTSC resolutions. So we're going to, and so the 240p test suite knows that and adjusts for you. We're gonna go ahead and bake this one to one pixels, proportional, and we're gonna make this nine times again, just like we did before with 240p. And as you can see, it's it's okay, it's a little wobbly. That is, again, that's fine. The PAL resolution that you need to increase to is not 3432, it is 3456, 3456. And that's just because the PAL sampling rate is simply different than the NTSC rate. Great, now that we're here, the other numbers are the same. The decimation factor is correct. Go ahead and hit phase. And as you can see, the wobbling is gone and this is as sharp as, that can, as it can be. Now, the, issue, the only issue here is that the, and we're gonna go, we're gonna go to the scaling 
menu and bring this back to four by three so that everything looks right. Unfortunately, when you use the 240p test suite and switch to a PAL resolution at this moment, the uh, SMPTE color bars are gone. That is okay. We can just hit regular color bars. Is it regular ones? No, I think it was this one. This one is fine. You want to hit EBU color bars or color bars with grayscale. Not color bars with grayscale because this doesn't have white. This definitely does have white. Go to the uh, go to the ADC menu one more time and then hit automatic gain. Okay, so in this picture, the blue is not perfectly calibrated to blue. That's okay. Um, and it's only like one half a number off, which is why it switches between 254 and 255. You can increase this by one. Actually, no. You can choose to increase green by one. Green is where the luma value is, so it'll increase everything. But at this point, it's as close as it can be. So I will increase it by one just to make it a little bit brighter and stable. Great. So now this means that I finished with 288. I can go back to the main menu in 240p test suite, and I'm going to save this profile. In 240p test suite, we're going to move on to the next resolution, which is going to be uh, 576i scaled assets. And again, this is going to be a PAL resolution, so it is going to show a little differently in the color bars. Hit the scale menu, hit uh, go down to aspect correction, make it one to one, make the scaling mode proportional and bring this up to five so that we get as sharp an integer scale of, of a picture as possible. Hit the ADC, bu ADC button on the remote and again, samples per line because we are in PAL is going to be 3456, 3456. And we're going to make the decimation factor four. So as you can see, this brings it back to where it needs to be. Let's hit the scale again. Actually, don't hit the scale yet. We're going to make, we're going to auto calibrate phase. And that gets, gets, helps get rid of a, the shadows a little bit. It's still a little fuzzy, but that's just because it's in interlaced mode. So this is pretty well calibrated. Let's go ahead and put the aspect correction back into four by three and the scaling mode back to autofill. Um, let's go back to the ADC menu using the remote and in the 240p test suite one more time, go to EBU color bars and hit auto calibrate gain on the RetroTank 4K remote. Oh, that did not calibrate right, here we go. Okay, as I mentioned before, it's not perfectly, it's, it's as calibrated as it can be. This blue value is not at 255. If you want it to stay there, increase it, increase the green until all three values are at 255. So this is calibrated at 576i, that's great. Let's go back and change this to 480p. Now this is going to be a little tricky, but before we do that, let's go back in the menu, down into options, and turn off the 480p scan lines by making it 0%. This is going to be the trickiest part. If you have a specific model of Wii, which is a CPU 01 revision, the, one of the first revisions, you will be able to get the sharpest picture possible out of your Wii. All other Wiis have a low pass filter applied at 480p, and there is no way to turn it off otherwise. If you have, if 
you will be able to tell immediately using the 240p test suite whether you have the uh, 480p fix available because your picture will be as sharp as possible. However, the numbers I'm going to give you are apply to any Wii to get the picture as sharp as it can be. It will just be much sharper if you have the specific CPU 01 revision of a Wii. Um, and I, the numbers are going to be the same as the NTSC resolutions. I just wanted to make you aware of that. So in the 240p test suite, we are going to open the grid. And just so that you see what I'm talking about, let's go ahead and create, I'll make this one-to-one -one square pixels, do proportional uh, scaling mode, and then make the vertical factor five. Hit the ADC button on the RetroTank remote and increase the samples per line to 34, 32. Increase the decimation factor to four. We are pretty close to where we need to be. And finally, go down to auto calibrate phase and hit phase. As you can see, the there is a little bit of ghosting to the left or to the right of the squares. And as I mentioned, there's really nothing you can do. We can inc we, Let's increase the scale a little bit more just so that you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, as you can see on the left side of the squares of any white box or any white line there is a little bit of ghosting and no matter how many times i run auto calibrate phase it does not go away if you were using a cpu 01 revision of the wii it would look solid white with no ghosting so i wanted to make you aware of that let's go ahead and make this four by three bring the proportional back to 4.5, which is what it is by default, and put this back into auto. Hit the ADC menu one more time. And in the 240p test suite, this is the last time we are going to the SMPTE color bars. Hit the A button to make sure that you are in 100%, and then auto calibrate gain. As you can see, green here is at 254. We're going to increase it, and it is solid at 255. This is great. We are done calibrating the Wii. We can save this profile. And you are done calibrating the Wii in all five resolutions that it presents. Let's see, is there a checkerboard pattern here for us to look at something? No, that's the drop shadow test. No, nope. sorry, I'm looking for the drop shadow, uh, not the drop shadow, the checkerboard pattern, but I see it's not here. That's okay. Oh, here it is, checkerboard. So the checkerboard looks okay, uh, might look okay, but if we were to zoom in as much as possible, make this four by three and increase it as much as possible. As you can see, it's not a solid checkerboard. Every black square puts a, puts a gray square to the right of it. So this just means that our Wii, my Wii, is not as sharp as it can be, but that's okay. The, um, the picture, this is as sharp as it gets, and I would play any Wii game in 480p over playing it in 480i at any time. And there is one last thing that you do need to be aware of. Let's go ahead and reset the Wii. And this is just to let you know that there are two ways to play games on the Wii. You can either play them in 15 kilohertz mode, in SDTV mode, or you can play them in 
excuse me, or you can play them in, let's bring this back to four by three. And let's bring this back to 4.5. Now we can save. Or you can play them in enhanced definition TV mode. You want to use the standard definition modes when you are playing virtual console games. A lot of the virtual console games will output in 240p when you play them. And a lot of the other games play much better when you play a lot of Wii games and GameCube games will play better if you play them in 480p. However, you cannot do that in the you can't do that in the USB loader GX menu. You have to do that in the Wii's menu. The Wii menu is outside of USB loader GX and you have to choose. I personally am leaving it in 480i because I play a lot of virtual console games and I play on a CRT. So that is going to be that. Anyway, thanks everyone for watching. This is a this is the optimized Wii profile. You can find this stock with the RetroTink 4K. This is the Switch one. Stock with the RetroTink 4K. Um, and if you have any other questions, you can always join the Discord or see the wiki for all of the numbers that you need. Have a great night, everyone.